The following is a presentation on the Donnie Sports 17 Network. Special edition of the Donnie Sport Football Show. We're coming to you from AT&T Stadium here in Arlington, Texas, and it's a very special event. Here, it's the AT&T Cotton Bowl Hall of Fame. Six members are going in. Some of them we all grew up with. <laughs> and I'm gonna swing you around, show you who's all in the room here. We have that guy right there. Bob Golick played for Notre Dame, and he was a part of one of the most miraculous Cotton Bowl games in history. I'll talk about 1979. How you doing there, Mike? That was Michael Conradi, by the way. <laughs> Media genius here at uh, at and Cotton Bowl. That's, uh, I, I like I said, Cotton Bowl, 1979, in the ice and everything. He was a part of that miraculous comeback. That's why right. 22 points down. Joe Montana just brings everything back. And uh, how you doing? And there's a guy, the other guy that we we're going to talk to. That was Eric Dickerson. We we're going to talk to him. Uh, Tony Buscelli. See, that's uh, right there. Tony Buscelli played for USC, and he just. And uh, I'll tell you more about him later, but right now let's go to, there's a local hook to everything here with the Cotton Bowl, and this guy's about as local as local gets. That's right, 1982 Cotton Bowl, you guys, well, let's, this is Eric Dickerson by the way, SNU took on Pitt in that game, I remember it was, it was kind of, very was it cold, cold? Very cold day, we won 7-3. That's uh, right. Yeah, the, kind of the last couple of minutes of the game, we scored a touchdown. That's right, and uh, it was 7-3, to three, and it was a defensive struggle, so that means one thing, uh, the rushing game had to be huge, and you were. <laughs> well, I, had, I remember I had 127 yards, 125, 127 yards in that game, on 27 carries, didn't score a touchdown, uh, mm -hmm. it was slippery. Wet, day cold. Um, I remember one play because I was telling the guys who hit this, the guys that I know now, Dan Marino and some of the guys. I said if it wouldn't have been, if it, oh, sorry, if it wouldn't have been uh, so wet. I was going back, came around the corner, but I couldn't make the corner because it was just too, too wet and cold and went around the lines. Uh -huh. And back then the Cotton Bowl was all turf. It wasn't, it was all turf, yeah. it wasn't grass back then. No, no grass. <laughs> the Pony Express, you. Craig James and that bunch. I mean, uh, you, you, you guys had to how much you impacted football back then? Well, no, I didn't. I didn't think people really knew who we were. You know, because they didn't have all. You know, they have now plus television. You know, ESPN and Sports Round the Clock and Fox. Um, but you know, when I got to the NFL, people were saying, "Man, you part of Pony Express." You know, Pony Express, and I, I was like shocked. Uh, but I mean, we thought we had a, a great football team, defense and offensively. 
uh, we can run the football, we run the formation. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we know they stacked the line of scrimmage against us, but we still able to run the football. That's right. And speaking of that uh, particular cotton bowl, what the impact that came out? You, Craig James, Dan Marino came out of that game. I mean, you look back in that uh, game and how much those three players, including yourself, impacted the NFL in so many different ways. I mean, I always played in the NFL. Uh, you know, Dan, I was the first round pick. I was the second pick in the first round. Dan was the first round pick. I think the 29th pick in the first round. I think Craig was the USFL player came and played for the Patriots. Uh, it was a lot of guys playing that, on that field that went pro. A lot of, a lot of players. Um, you know, I don't know what we did for the league, but, you know, we tried to just show our talent, you know, in the National Football League. You know, that, that uh, my, my rookie season in the NFL, I was rookie of the year. Uh, I beat that damn Reno. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was, uh, it, was, it, was, it, was a, it was a great game. It was a guy had a great career in college and the girls. Uh, uh, you've seen a lot of football, especially in current years now. Comparing the style of play where you were playing back then to now, you think the uh, college game has gotten pass happy? All these uh, run and shoot offenses, swinging the ball all around. Well, I think I think all football teams and uh, try to mimic themselves after the pro teams. They really do. I think if the pros start passing the football, then they want to pass the football. If the pros start running the football, they want to run the football. And I think everybody has to have a quarterback. I mean, he had to have a quarterback back in those days. He really did. Uh, great defense and they didn't have a, be able to have a running game. And now, you know, everyone must have a quarterback and throw the ball, you know, 70 times a game or 60 times a game run the ball, you know, maybe 10 or 15 times. And, you know, in our era, you know, we didn't really do that. You, you kind of even it out. Um, but now it's just really a ball about the quarterback. Let me ask you a question. When you got the call, they are Eric Dickerson, SMU, 1983 Cotton Bowl. Let's see. I'll tell you what. I'm going to try to get someone. Let's get this guy because watching that particular Cotton Bowl back in 79. And he was a part of two impactful Cotton Bowls as well. In the year before. It would be a great deal. You'd really enjoy it. I know, I, I can't even find my dorm anymore. Just <laughs> <laughs> be able to see my dorm room. Like Let's see if I. I think he's over here. Oh, there he goes. Yeah. Let's hop over there. Hello. <laughs> that guy there. Voice is wearing fur. I mean, he's wearing fur. you know him. He's coaching. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, what would you like a bottle of water? Oh. oh thank you. What? Are you what thirsty? Yeah, that's good. One thing about the cotton bowl, they treat you like a king over here. They give you water. They, 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 anything you want, you can have. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here's a guy. He coached the uh, Texas Longhorns three times here in the cotton bowl. But there's one cotton bowl that uh, stands out to my memory for all kinds of reasons. And let me introduce him. Coach Fred Akers, how you doing? Welcome to the Donnie Sport uh, Football Show. Uh, uh, well, yeah. thank you for recognizing me that we are going to yeah. still keep going on. That's right, yeah. Uh, That's right. <coughs> now, you had some big shoes to fill when you took over uh, Texas football. I mean, Daryl Royal, who was legendary, I mean, on top of legendary. Yeah. 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 Hook them horns. Let's, let's get that. Thank you. That's right. Yeah. There you are. That's right. And uh, what was it like? I mean, you, you come in from, if I recall, Wyoming, right? University of Wyoming. Well, I was, yeah. I came back from there. Ah. I was there for two years. Uh -huh. and, uh, they, <clears throat> they took Daryl out of the picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, I hated that. Yeah. yeah. He deserved mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, he, uh, he did. He deserved better. That's right. Yes. Yeah. That's right. You took over. You had some great, great seasons with the Longhorns. You took them to the Cotton Bowl three times. One particular Cotton Bowl that just stands out, and I'll take you to it. Was, uh, was it 19, I believe, 81, 82? You took on Paul Bear Bryant's 
Crimson Tide, Alabama. 82? Yes, right, 82. And uh, at the beginning, it wasn't good. You down 10 nothing. Uh, things weren't exactly uh, cooking the way you wanted to work. And then uh, it did a slight tweak at quarterback. And I can go ahead and say this. I went to high school with Robert Brewer. <laughs> went to high school with him in Richardson. You don't believe how elated we were when he uh, took over and scored that touchdown to beat Bama. <laughs> I mean, what what was Robert Burr like as far? What what in intrigued him enough to recruit him and get him down to Texas? Well, I'll tell you, Robert was a, is the kind of guy that you will you will kind of throw him out of the way. He's not big enough, he's not strong enough, he can't sprint fast enough. Uh, our, we found out that, that was a false good. It was good, but it was false. Yeah. No, he was that's what that's what a <laughs> drop back with <laughs> with flaring backs uh -huh. and his, all they had to do was one block. Uh -huh. One. That's what. And you, well, here he goes. And that hole, oh, it was it was a big gaping hole, and it was like you just drive a truck right through it. And he's just it like, was. yeah. Well, like, well, I had. Uh, we were going through the films afterward, uh -huh. and <laughs> when uh, all of a sudden our, our players were giggling about Robert, yeah. and they, they, they made him, <laughs> he said it took 12, 12 minutes for him to to go 30 yards. <laughs> I take this the wrong way. I didn't recognize you without your hat on. That's the first thing I was going to tell you. <laughs> Did you always have the hat? Well, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So I almost didn't recognize you without your hat on. That's number one. Number two, what's your fondest memory of coaching inside the college and being part of the classic? Well, <clears throat> that's... Uh, oh, yeah. Taggart has dwindled a little bit. Not between Notre Dame and, and Texas. And <clears throat> we don't care who we, you know, who we get ready for. Uh, and not to make, you know, I'm like blowing up trying to cripple. We don't do that. But it's uh, it's good for football. When you get the call that you're going to be inducted into this Hall of Fame, Scott Cole, what sort of emotion, what sort of things went rushing through you? Well, it's a uh, it's an opportunity, uh, and it's uh, something that. No one else can just walk on it. It's my turn. And I think we can, you know, just do the kind of football that we're going to play. And whatever it takes. Mm. Yeah. Can I get a picture with you if you don't mind? Sure. All right, then. Did you mind? Yeah. Oh, I did. That was Fred Akers of... <laughs> yeah, let's, let's see. You, That's Tony Boselli. I can go ahead. I'm just going to grab this Go ahead. <laughs> That's right. The pride of USC, Southern California. How are you doing, doing partner? Sure. All right, then. Welcome to the Donnie Sport Football Show. And, and, Thanks uh, for having me. All right, then. USC, and uh, if there was one thing I would know about USC, that no matter what position, you get legendary when, when, you get, when you get special like that. Well, I don't know about legendary, but sure, a fun place to go play football, and a lot of good players have played there. So That's right. A tremendous tradition, and to be part of that tradition, so uh -huh. it's quite an honor. That's right, yeah. 
And you played on the offensive line. Yeah, for left tackle. That's for left tackle. And offensive lineman from USC, and I'm trying to think. That and a, uh, a guy named Anthony, the brain just went blank. Oh, Anthony Munoz, yeah, he's yeah, pretty good. He's not a bad player. <laughs> yeah, he set the standard uh, for left tackle play in the modern era, especially in the NFL. And uh, it was, uh, it's always fun. I mean, I see you can go through every position at SC, and there's an all time great at one of those positions. And Anthony Munoz is, in my opinion, the best uh, offensive lineman ever played the game. That's right. Now, if I recall that game against uh, Texas Tech, it, it was wasn't even close. close. It wasn't even close. It was close to kickoff. Yeah. <laughs> but both teams showed up. But uh, when the, you tend to envision how t games turned out over uh, the day of, but did you envision a blowout the way it did? What's no, you never envisioned that. We were confident. We felt like we had really good players. And uh, we knew that we'd uh, have a good chance but uh, uh, to play well. But uh -huh. We never envisioned beating a team like Texas Tech. They had a lot of good players. Uh -huh. uh, one of the, a great linebacker in the NFL, Zach Thomas, was the starting oh, yeah. middle backer. They were really good. Yeah. And uh, we just played much better that day. So you never <laughs> believe that's going to happen, though. All right, Tony. All right. All right. All right. Thanks, Tony. All right, then, boy. As we move around, it's Eric Dixon's over there. Let's see if I can get a word with this guy here. He's got some white sports opinions. It would have driven them crazy. But now it's, they're like, oh, no, this is what people want. Just because you say they want it. They don't care what the majority of the white people want. I mean, if one person is offended, that's the only thing. One person's offended, then I know, I all of a sudden it. nobody it's can it. It's just amazing to me that one person can have so much oh, influence in a negative way. And in the schools also. In the schools also. Well, okay, you're going next year. You know, you know, yeah, you've you know, graduated with it. So, and, and, you know, and, and it's turned into this litigious society that, and one of the reasons the schools do panic is because they don't want to get sued. I mean, they don't have the money to go up against organizations like, um, you know, what is it? Uh, people against religion. And the ACLU a lot of times will sign up with the, uh, the anti religion people. So, you know, so it comes down to you stick to your guns. Um, but school districts, a lot of times, they don't think they money. So, it is small. Yeah, so, so now it just it comes down to guys now have to be very careful what they say. Yeah, true. All right, Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Okay, and there he is, Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Yes, the school with the Golden Dome, and this guy here. Part of the offensive line that pretty much met, met well, I actually played linebacker, wasn't it? Yeah, linebacker. Line. Okay. Yep. <laughs> okay. yep. Bob Golick is his name. How you doing? Welcome I'm to doing Donnie Sports Football. Thank you. Thank All right. you. There's one particular Cotton Bowl I got to ask you about. Okay. Many people ask you about as well. January 1st, 1979. Okay. The Ice Bowl. Yes. Close to it. You and uh, University of Houston, and you guys were down 22 points. And. Mm -hmm. What was the mood at that point in the game? We were cold. Yeah. <laughs> cold freezing, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, I remember we were, I mean, we were obviously, it, 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 we were playing a great team, so it, it didn't feel like this is, this is not one of those teams where we're going to be able just to, to push our way back and, and to win. But you know, once Montana went out there and, and started finding receivers and throwing the ball, you know, we the in my class we had watched Montana bring back so many come back in so many games uh -huh. over the four years, our four years at school, that if anybody was gonna do it, it was gonna be Joe. But you know, as as the story goes, Joe was Joe had uh, I don't know he was like hypothermic um, at halftime. He was so cold he was shaking. Uh -huh. And so as the the story goes, as time goes on, they took him to the locker room. At halftime, we all went in there. They gave him a hot chicken broth, uh -huh. which they had for all of us. Uh -huh. And then he goes back back out and does the comeback. And so all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it became the story became. Chicken soup, saved it for another day. <laughs> now, is, is there a, is that 
pretty much true. Or yeah, is that an urban myth. Yeah, that's all very legit. Yeah, well, it wasn't close chicken. enough to be. It wasn't chicken <laughs> soup. There were no noodles. Okay, it was chicken broth. Chicken broth. Yeah, yeah. the liquid. Yeah. yeah, it was definitely something chicken broth. More. Yeah, it was something designed yeah. for science, hot chocolate, and hot coffee. Something warm to get down as yeah. well. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. But it was always just like the funniest thing to see. You know, some something your grandma he goes. Oh, honey, you don't you feel good here. Here's some chicken soup. <laughs> and next thing exactly. you know, you're, you're, your quarterback's coming out of the, uh, out of the locker room re revitalized and making that comeback. It was just incredible. Have you been part of any kind of comeback at any level more dramatic than that? It's a team that you not played a, on. Not in a game of, of that magnitude. Um, I, I played with Joe for Montana for four years. And so playing for Joe with that many years, you're going to play in other games that... You know, the comebacks are, are yeah. incredible. I mean, he, I think his first, my sophomore year, I think it was his first comeback where they put him out there. Because they were really hesitant putting him as the, in as the starter. Uh, we had a lot of other guys that Devine was trying to put in. But against North Carolina, um, we were down, and I don't remember how many points it was, we were down significantly. They brought him in and he, he, he brought us back. The, um, I think the next year against uh, Air Force Academy, we were up at, at, in Colorado Springs, and we were down 30 to 10 with about 10 minutes left in the game. And we came back and won 31 to 30. So it was, it was, it was because those damn people were flying those damn falcons at our heads. <laughs> swooping down at Yeah, they were the swooping line. down. A lot of our guys couldn't, you know, they were having flashbacks from the beginning of the game. <laughs> But yeah, so with having Joe around, it was, you, you knew there was always a chance. And I know that sounds kind of cliche, but you, you truly, of anybody I've ever known, Montana was the guy that just always found a way to, to bring it back. In this, in this era of you know, CTE, concussion concerns, etc., are you concerned about the future of football as a sport, whether the next oh. generation will play it enough or play yeah. it well enough to... Be this, you know, what what will football look like in 20 years? Well, first off, my my first concern is that it that it still exists uh, as it does now. I mean, I, I hear, you know, I hear people, <clears throat> non-football people, doctors and and the, and the like that who would like to. Let's put it this way: when I heard somebody say we're thinking about having the offense and defensive line start in a two-point stance. You know, no, no getting down, no leverage, no hitting like that. It's just stand there, that way you can block each other, but nobody hits their head really hard. Um, <clears throat> then you start watching some of the calls, and I know the referees are being put, getting a lot of push from the, the league to try and, you know, make it look safer. Right. But the bottom line is, I mean, when I was in, God, I was in sixth, seventh grade, and I decided to play football, I, they handed me a helmet, and I put it on and said, I, I guess I got to protect my head. Yeah. I mean, it's like nobody, nobody was under any idea that that you weren't going to get hit in the head. Right. So it just uh, and it became very surprising to me that everybody was complaining. And now, is there? There's guys all the time that have to get knee replacements, shoulder, things like that, and it's all resulting from playing the National Football. Why would you think that that the possibility of a head injury uh, might not have lasting effects? In fact, my my last year, one of my last years in the league, I, I remember getting I remember getting dinged. Yeah, we didn't have concussions. We you just got dinged. dinged. Yeah. yeah. Come out and then we had, they, plays. they had a thing full of those little ammonia capsules. Yeah, yeah. I, yep. I actually have some around the house just to, on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sit and watch football games and pop ammonia caps. Yeah, just to keep. keep yeah. yeah, I don't think there's a law against it. I mean, not. No, it's not. I think I'm okay. Yeah. I get them legally. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would need a prescription. It's not like I bring them in from Saigon or anything. <laughs> the home of the uh, ammonia caps. Exactly. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's good. It's it's a good, good line, though. Yeah, exactly. Works for me. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, but so why why you would think that there wouldn't be a possibility that they would have? In fact, like I said, my last year, I, I, I remember by about about mid season, I had been dinged like three times, mm -hmm. and not not all bad where I was unconscious or anything, but just where I was a little off and you know I was you could really you could really tell you'd been you'd been right. knocked a little goofy. And so at that point I, I literally thought to myself, 
I got to start thinking about this because it's a lot. It's a lot happening in in one season. I said, what happens if there's something? And I thought to myself, what happens if you know there's something after the football? And so I, I can't imagine that guys didn't think about the possibility. I think, and I, I hate to say this, but I think there's a lot of a lot of the former NFL guys that saw an opportunity to make some money. Right. And, uh, at, and to be perfectly honest, I literally had guys saying to me, aren't you going to join the, the uh, you're not going to join the lawsuit? And I'm like, no, no. I, I mean, I, I'm fine. And they said, and they, these guys were saying, hey, you know, we got to, you know, we can get like 100, 200 grand out of this. I said, well, do you, are you having a problem? And well, no, but we can get some money out of this. And I'm like, you know, so you're going to compromise the reputation of the National Football League for making some money. And it just, it, it really ticked me off. And so, you know, it's it's something that happened. If you didn't think it was going to happen, uh, they, they always worried about saying things like, well, they made me go back in. Or they made me feel like if I didn't go back in, you know what, you do that to yourself. As a player, you do that to yourself. I always did that to myself. I'm, I'm Bob Golick, you okay? Yeah, you know, I'm looking, and I look out in the field, and there's my backup. <laughs> and he was, why am I, Golik, you're not on our team, get on the other sideline. <laughs> you know, I'm looking over at, uh, you know, I'm looking on the field and there's somebody else playing my position. And I'm thinking, I'm fine, I'm going back out there. Yeah. Yeah. Him, go out there and be a star. Uh, and if, if, you, if you say any different, then either you didn't love playing football or you're a liar. Yeah. Multiple generations of Golics obviously anyway, played the yeah, game uh, very well. Bob Golick, Notre Dame, talked about a variety of uh, things from him playing in NFL, Notre Dame, for this concussion issue that uh, concerns all of football. This, this is just the beginning of, I think there will be a special day here at AT&T Stadium, the Cotton Bowl Hall of Fame event. If you really think about it, in the history of the Cotton Bowl, the number of well-known football players that has played in this game, and you just saw just a few of them. We mentioned Joe Montana, Dan Marino, Ray James, and oh boy, he, uh, a bunch more. Troy Aikman played in this game, uh, Roger Starbuck, Joe Theismann. The list goes on and on and on and on and on, and every year, well, like every, oh, see how many, like every four years, five, six, uh, the Cotton Bowl honors these uh, athletes who played in, in the biggest uh, spotlight of them all, which is, this is one of the premier bowl games uh, in college football. And they uh, pick uh, six folks to put into the Hall of Fame, their Hall of Fame. And this is a uh, program that goes all the way back a while. and. For them doing this, it's a uh, it's a real cool thing, and uh, so looking forward to the next group of uh, folks that they uh, vote and induct into the Cotton Bowl Hall of Fame. And my gosh, we're gonna be there for that as well. As a matter of fact, so coming up, we have the uh, Hall of Fame event. We just saw the interviews. Now we're gonna show you the event and the actual uh, induction to to this uh, prime Hall of Fame. Cotton Bowl Hall of Fame event continues here on this special edition of the Donnie Sport Football Show right here on the Donnie Sport 17 Network.